right, we're live. Say hello. Welcome. Welcome to the Armani Casa. Thanks for having me. All right. How you doing? Good to see you again. Good to see you again. All right. All right. Here we go. Good afternoon. I can't slap the table because the tripod's on the table. Good afternoon, everybody. My name's Alex Vidal. I am president of Related ISG International Realty and host of the show you're watching today, The Closer Club. We changed it last week because anybody who's successful in business is a closer, including this guy to my right, Mr. Gil Dezer, developer of some of the most prestigious buildings in all of South Florida. Uh, this is episode, as we're sharing, episode number 41 of the show. Uh, Gil was my second guest on the show, episode number two, but somebody was holding the camera, people were talking in the background, so Gil deserved the redo. Here we go, you ready? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's do it. All right. By the way, remember, if you wanna work with a broker who's connected to some of the biggest people, not only in real estate, but in business and athletes, Mindset, all that jazz. Call me, DM me, text me, or call Gil because Gil has a great real estate company. Or you can call well. him and I'll sell him the apartment. There you go. <laughs> now, Gil, talking about apartments, you have developed some of the coolest buildings in all of South Florida, and you have actually helped make cities into world class destinations like where we are today, Sunny Isles. Tell us a little bit about your path to how where we are today. Well, the funniest part about my path is I started ISG. Yeah, yes. I know you. I, I was working there for a few years. Um, you know, when when uh, when Jerry was still around, and yeah. it was a great experience. It was really what helped me. Uh, what kind of helped form opinions on, on how to do business here in Miami and how to sell where buyers were coming from and and what kind of product they were looking for, and, and that kind of led the way to uh, to me. You know, doing doing it, what what it is that we do? You know, we we uh, we started off our first project um, was Ocean Brand, okay. and um, and 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 September 11th happened. And we got a little nervous as did the rest of the country. And we, at that point, we linked up with, with Trump. And, and that's when we rebranded our, our project from Ocean Grant to Trump Grant. And that was what finally got us into that whole branding concept. We realized how well it worked. And so uh, and that's, you know, from, from there, it opened the doors to many others, to Porsche and Armani and, and, and a few more down the road. You really, you guys really are the pioneer of bringing in, attaching a brand to, to the buildings. We were definitely the first ones and, uh, and, and we're, we're proud that people are copying us. We just wish they would copy us better, you yeah. know, and we wish they would do it to the level that we're doing it and not trying to water it down like the other brands are doing. Well, and you guys, it's funny because that segues right into question number two. Buildings like Porsche have really pushed the envelope in terms of the concept of adding, not like just Trump, but you're adding names and brands to buildings things like nobody's ever done before. Uh, but you also had your own invention, the Deservator, with the elevator in the middle of the building for the cars. And Armani, who, which we can see from here, is its sheer size is, I think, one of the largest projects related to even ever been involved in, and I'm sure Absolutely. for you as well. Yeah. What systems do you have in place to handle? I mean, that's some like real pressure. New concepts, huge billion dollar budgets. How, how do you handle that? Well, we, we handle it. That's, you know, that's why I go to work every day, you know, to make sure that the billion dollar budgets are actual budgets that, that, that get executed and don't get overspent. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the key to this whole thing is, is selling the units, as you know. That's why, that's why we deal with the brokers and the brokerage community. And so selling the units means you have to put out a quality product. And, um, and so that's exactly what we, what, we, what we did. You know, we, the Trump Towers, still till today, people say is the best layouts, the best floor plans. And not just that, the buildings are run very, very well which is the same as, uh, as the Porsche Design Tower. Everybody there is, uh, is extremely happy on how the building actually came out. Floor plans are excellent, really excellent. Compare them apples to apples to anything in Miami. It's the best floor plan in Miami. And of course, we, you know, all the extras we have in there, swimming pools on every balcony. Yeah. And the, the car elevator, you know, the Deservator, came from, uh, you know, it was a necessity, it was the mother of invention. You know, when we sat down with Porsche, we said, well, what does Porsche really have to do with, with, the, with the building? So right. we, we wanted to make the building, first of all, Porsche being a brand, we wanted you to feel it when you walked in the building. So that building looks, feels, and smells Porsche. I mean, even, even, even the air conditioning, we, we pump in the, the Porsche design perfume in the air conditioning. So, I mean, and that was, so we really, we really translated the brand perfectly into what it is a building. But then again, being a car brand, we wanted to make it, you know, the initial concept was to make it about for the car lover and about the car. And, uh, and having that guy who loves to have his cars next to him in, in his living room specifically, you know, buying it. But what really happened was we had a lot of people who bought because they like the idea of having a house size apartment, you sure. know, not just a 2,000 square foot little apartment, but like a, something the size of a house, having the ability to come and go with the car elevator and not having to ask for any assistance or having to ask for valets and, and also a level of privacy and security that we didn't even think of that, you know, when we, we just wanted to make it cool. Yeah. And, but then buyers were coming in, oh, so you mean I can come up and go in a black Mercedes with black windows and nobody knows what I'm doing? Yeah, well, that, so they felt really like they're living in a home, in a house, but in the sky. And so that house in the sky concept is where the Porsche design really fell into and, and, uh, and it, it was a home run success. I mean, we have, we have six units left to sell and, and uh, you know, we're, we're, we're selling them slowly until we get our price. 
We're letting all the lesser resales clean themselves up, sure. and I'm I'm still holding on to my units because I think it's gold. And going forward, you know, where the Armani Casa again, floor plans unbelievable because that building has a beautiful angle and also juts out to the ocean. Sure. So you really and it flares out at the top. It's it's beautiful. just amazing. I mean, you're in that you're in that you're in the, on the balcony there, and you feel like you're on a cruise ship, like oh, hanging out over the ocean. It, the building is spectacular. The lobbies and common areas. My, my only hope is that people will appreciate this level of design because this is a level of interior design that Miami has never seen before. You know, um, we're sitting there with, the, with these Armani people, you know, on a, on a daily, weekly basis going over things. They are down to the half a millimeter on marble cuts and that kind of stuff. And it's really about the, the overall aesthetic and the look. It's a pain in the neck. Yeah, I'll tell you sure. that. It's a lot of headache. It's a major, but the but the final result is going to be something never seen before here in Miami. The level of finish there is going to be second to none. Well, what I love about it is, you know, instead of saying, "Oh, I work out in the morning," or, or I, "I journal," or "I do this," the way you handle the pressure is you just believe so much in the product that you're delivering that that's how you handle it. That's well, I mean, we're there. We're living it every day, yeah. you know. And so, uh, you know, it's a, it's it's not a job. It's a career, right? And, and yes, I mean, I'm in the morning already. You know, from the morning, sending texts asking, "Hey, what happened on this? What happened on that?" And so. You know that's how we, we start I start the, the ball rolling already that morning and, awesome. and yeah but that's that's how it works it's you know the, the pressure comes you know I learned one thing and this is important for all your realtors out there to listen there was never such thing you, you talk about pressure right there's never such thing as distressed properties there's such there is such a thing as distressed sellers and so you know the <laughs> interesting the, the I've property, never heard it like that. you see so the property and, and the pressure is it's only about the pressure that you portray I mean we don't I don't I have a bank loan I'm well sold, we're in balance, which means if I don't sell another unit today, I'm still profitable on the project. So as far as money pressures, that's gone. I mean, I just have to make sure that the building gets delivered, as we said, and, and the budgets. Make sure that we're hitting the budgets, which we do. We know how to do that very well. And, and of course, the time and not letting things get out of control because a construction project can get out of control very, very quickly sure. if you're not like on top of it. And I can't just take credit for myself. I mean, Related is my partner there. They have great teams in place. Um, JP is actually, uh, JP, yeah. John, John, John Paul. I had him on a couple weeks ago. Yeah, he's, he's an excellent guy. Great guy to have as a partner. Great guy to work with. And so he's handling a lot of the construction issues and stuff like that. We, we show up to the meetings and, and give our input. So, I mean, the project's running very, very well. And, and But more important is the final product because, because you know, You've seen other buildings that promote and do this great thing. It's going to be amazing, amazing. And you walk in and it's like, what the hell it's is this? Product. Yeah, it's terrible. I don't want to mention names. I don't want no, to mention no, 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 no. But, but, um, but, you know, but, those pre but what happens is then the buyers walk in to actually close and they're like, what the hell did I just buy? And that's exactly why you want to buy in a branded project. Because in a branded project, you kind of have an expectation, a feeling. Here we are in the Armani Casa sales office. If you look at some of the design cues from here, it's the same exact you see in the Armani uh, Hotel in the, Burj, in the Burj Khalifa, which is the world's tallest okay. building. It's the same design cues you see in the Armani Hotel in Milan. And all the other, other Armani projects they're doing, it's a brand. So you, you really know what to expect. It's not just some interior designer's whim and, and some developers you know, sure. uh, managing the budget and cutting the cool, the cool stuff out, yeah. you know, which happens too often. Uh, I've seen it. You, know, you can see when things were value engineered yeah. at a project when this should have been a nice marble and it winds up being wallpaper. And so, <laughs> so um, you know, those, those are the things that we don't do. You know, we yeah. actually spend the money on the interiors we, and because uh, you know, just, not just by the, by the fact that we want to you know, create the best product, but it helps us then on the next tower, sure. you know? And, and, I, and I want to talk to you about that because yeah. you, aside from being a developer, you also own a real estate broker. So I want to circle right. back on something you said about why, why buy pre-construction. Um, but I have a couple questions to get to but before we get to that. Uh, we were sitting outside talking about Miami and uh, there was a guy I'm trying to get on the show, Dave Grutman, who owns Live Nightclub in Komodo and, and all that jazz. Uh, but there's a billboard on 395 that says, what is Miami? And it's a question to him. And I, I just saw that question, I'm like, what a great question. So what's Miami to you? Well, I'm a New Yorker. I grew up in New York. Yeah. I'm now a Floridian, okay? I've been here over 20 years. So, um, but what is Miami to me? Miami is, was a place, as a, as a kid growing up, was a place to come and relax. It was a, it was a second home vacation market. It's now turned into my home. But what it is to me, it's, it's, we are becoming or have become, um, we're on the verge of really being that world-class city that we want it to be. And it's starting now. We you know, obviously need more industry. And, and, uh, and if Jeff Bezos is listening, now that you got kicked <laughs> out of New York, come back down here, we need you. Um, but you know. <laughs> um, That's funny, we talked about Jeff yeah, well, JP make, too. Make, yeah, make, make sure he says it over there. So, um, no, but Miami, it's, it's a beautiful place. We live in paradise. You know, we, we are very fortunate that we can actually have a real industry within to work. 
and, and actually and earn a living and, and work with serious people. Yet at the same time, you know, come Friday, come Saturday, Sunday, we're on the boats having fun sure. and fishing and whatever the case may be. So, I mean, it's really, a, it's, a, it's a great, great place to live. Um, and, and that's why I wouldn't change it for anything. I still have an apartment in New York. I dread going back there. Yeah, it's I cold, go, man. Yeah, it's, go, it's cold. You know what it is? I hate walking down the streets and getting bumped in the shoulders by people. You know, you f in New York City, you feel like a rat in a maze. You know, and and uh, and you come down here, and uh, look at, I mean, this is this is amazing. It's, you know? it's paradise here, and that's why. And and those who don't, who haven't had a second home here yet, they just don't know any better. The way I see it, I I, I can't understand a New Yorker who comes down here who sees all this kind of stuff. And the only the only reason not to buy is if you can't afford it. That's that's my issue. Interesting. I love yeah. that. Yeah. If you can't afford it. Yeah. Now talking about affording, this is one thing I love about Porsche Tower. I think Porsche Tower has one of the largest, if not the largest, concentration of billionaires in one tower, especially in South Florida. What was the what are the most appealing features about Miami that are attracting these billionaires to South Florida? Well, for many, many years, you know, the 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 product, the level of product here has been you know, it was it was mediocre, and, okay. and including some of the buildings that you know early on that we did, that we did, and now the developers, including myself, are we're, we're we're trying to outdo each other. You know, we're keep on stepping up the game, and and that's that's now bringing the worldwide attention that, that we deserve. And so you're seeing you know buildings that are that amazing that you don't see them in some of the greatest markets. You know, including New York and Hong Kong, and so so people are taking taking notice to okay, I can actually live in a place like this. Um, and of course, Miami, like I said, lots of people want to come here, but um, up until, you know, maybe 10 years ago, there was almost no, there, there were no Ritz Carlton's here. You know, there was the first one we opened 15 years ago in, in, uh, in Key Biscayne. So, and now you have Bell Harbor bookended with Ritz Carlton, St. Regis, etc. cetera. Um, and you have, you have the higher end hotels here, which bring the higher end guests. Um, you know, even Bell Harbor went through a, a whole gentrification of its own, uh, the mall and, and the stores and everything that went through there. So it's, uh, it's really it's now stabilized as the high-end market. Um, Fiana helped and hurt in, in, at the same time by bringing in wealthy people sure. who, who really you know, wanted to make Miami their home. Um, hurt in a way that you know, the product wasn't as promised, but, but that's, that's a separate issue. But, but now the, but at least those buyers came down here and then they started snooping around and seeing other things. We actually had some buyers from Fiana who bought at, at Porsche. And we asked them, well, why didn't you come here initially? They said, well, we didn't really know about Sunny Isles that well. So it's, again, about educating the, the buyers. Everybody thinks that South Beach is the place to be until they see other stuff. And, and deal you know, with that traffic. And, and, and deal with that traffic. And, and they see that, that you know, there's, better, there's better places, better apartments, sure. at, at even, at even uh, you know, at, at, at half of the price in, yeah. uh, per square foot kind of thing. So, so um, that's where we're starting to see. And then, of course, um, right now we're, we're doing a heavy push on the New Yorkers because of the tax benefits to move down here. And so um, there's today you can work, you know, by by the phone. You know, you you have your I have my camera, phone right? Your, 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 your whole business walks around yeah. with you. So it's one of those things where you can be anywhere, and, and better to claim claim residency here in Florida. Well, you know what? What I love about your answer was, you know, I, and I've interviewed almost every developer in South Florida. I have a few more to go, including George Perez and David Martin and a few others. But pretty much across the board, everybody's answer has been, you know, we have great weather, great tax climate, all that jazz. But you're the first one, again, this is number 42, you're the first one to talk about the quality of the product that's being built today yeah. is different than any other time in the history of, well, of development. Maybe so. because I'm the only one building it. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I, I, just, I love that answer. I think, I, think that, I think the go to for most people is, oh, well, we don't have state income tax. I and mean, when you can homestead your property and then do this and we have great weather, it's 80 degrees. That, that's the tail yeah. wagging the dog. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, people are buying these apartments to live in there, you know? Yeah. Right? Too many of these cool hotel chains forget that people go to the hotels to sleep in the beds yeah. you know they, they, they make the room they make the room too cool and do this and design design and when you get to actually just go to sleep it's too uncomfortable one of those things these apartments are are actually made for living in and so when people come in here and they see the buildings and they see how we operate the building and, and we really go and, and create that brochure the lifestyle within the building itself so that's one of the reasons why it's you know it's more than just selling the apartment it's the actual lifestyle that we offer afterwards and and executing on that you know, it's funny because my next question here is what should every realtor be including in their elevator pitch to their clients about Miami? And aside, is there anything aside from the tax climate and the weather and the quality of the product? I mean, we kind of really answered this question. Is there anything else that the realtor should be talking to their clients about? Well, about? I was I was on my boat this weekend with a client from New York. Okay. And all I had to do with them is I turned around and said, look around. Can you, can you do this in January or in February in New York? And that's, you know, that's the answer right there. there you go. So, you know, I mean, we, we have the ability to, to you know, my, my, my sister still live there and we were also discussing on, on our, about our kids. My, my sisters live in Manhattan and they have to drive out to the Hamptons just to see some green space and have the kids run around. And here, at my, you know, my, I live on the beach. My backyard is, is the sand. Yeah. And, you know, it's a, it's a great place that you could actually spend a lot of time outside. 
versus um versus you know the, the different the different places up north where you're, you're freezing cold all the time you're, you're indoors there you go you know now my how do you see miami's evolved a lot and is is going to evolve and we have so much runway to go how do you see the personality of miami evolving and what do you think that makes miami look like in the next five ten years well no i i have a longer term vision for sure. Miami's not just five ten years right but you know five ten years we'll be doing what we're doing now we're continuing to grow and, and to build out um, and and uh, you know people will continue to come here. Uh, we, it comes in waves as we have problems in South America. You know the South Americans coming here to invest, and so we understand that that's that's a, a large part of the market. But at the same time, we we are now uh, you know we still get tons of American tourists as well as the Europeans. The, the 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 entire world is going through a little bit of a of a economic kind of not downturn or recession but like a little chilling right sure. now. So when that cleans up, you're going to start seeing people come here. This is a resilient area that people will always love to come, and it's just getting better. You know, better restaurants, more things to do, and and more fun stuff for for everybody to, that, to go around. That's true. Yeah. You said you have a bigger vision. You have a longer vision. What do you mind sharing that? You don't have to. Well, I mean, I mean, no, my, my this place will be it, it eventually will be on par with uh, with or close to on par with New York City. Not not, not for way of um i'm talking about real estate values on the high end not necessarily the regular houses and Got stuff it. like that um and the reason for it is because the land is, is extremely scarce um there's almost no more oceanfront left and uh of the oceanfront i think i own about 80 percent of what's left in in miami dade county um we're still buying more we just purchased a uh, 12 acres up in, in palm beach county but um there's no more oceanfront left. This is not Dubai, where we're building out islands, islands in the middle of the ocean. You know, so so what's going to happen here is, uh, you know, if we, if you're the last Coca-Cola in the desert, what happens to the price? Yeah. You know, it's, and so it's, so from there, it's uh, you know, it's it. It, yeah, it's it's it, from there. That's what's going to happen here on the oceanfront prices. And you know, we're gonna we're gonna really come close to. I mean, you're never gonna yeah. get to, to the, not yet to the five thousand, ten thousand square foot of New York, but we're gonna get close to there uh, because of the scarcity sure. and the demand will continue to be strong. And the unfortunate case that we've seen in everything is the demand is always stronger once the building's there. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we were trying to sell the, the 130 units of Porsche for over the three years, four years of, of pre-construction. And then when we opened the building, you know, we got even more of those billionaires who we didn't market to, who they actually were waiting to come see the building and then saw it and fell in love. We, we had a lot of guys double down and buy a second unit for the family when they saw the building. So that, that's a, you know, it's a pat on the back, meaning that the, that the product itself that we delivered yeah. was better than everybody expected to. A lot of naysayers about the Deservator, oh, it's not gonna work, you're gonna get stuck, da, da, da. To, to date, the elevator has been running for two years. We had not one single operational shutdown. Knock on wood, wow. but, you know, but not Congrats. one single operational shutdown. We've, of course, shut it down for maintenance and that kind of stuff, scheduled stuff, so, but the thing's been working perfect, which is, uh, which is gonna open the doors for us to go do another car tower. You know, not, not on here, but I, out of curiosity, you said how people were doubling down once they saw the unit. Do you yeah. think that's gonna change the way developers sell units as they build, like later on, instead of requiring all these deposits up front and trying to pre-sell prior to even breaking ground, do you think in the next 15, 20 years that may change the way you even develop? No, I, I like the pre-sale model. Yeah. It, it's important. It's important because, and specifically with Porsche, I mean, it, the, the Porsche project with us started off, you know, we signed up with Porsche Design Tower uh, in 2007, and we were gangbusters, ready to go. The whole world, as you know, mm -hmm. collapsed. We sat down with them and we said, look guys, if we try and sell anything today, we're all gonna have an egg on our face. You're not gonna sell it to anybody, but it gave us time to design. And we came, and then we hit the right market. We said, and now we started to sell in 2011. It was still, the crisis was yeah. kind of going up. Coming out of it. Yeah, so we said, let's go to people who are not financially sensitive. The guys were not looking for a mortgage. The guys were not worried about the, you know, the down payment and how much, et cetera. So we came up with these huge units, um, starting at four and a half million dollars. You know, there's no other building in Miami anywhere in this entire town that says that the least expensive unit went for four and a half and up yeah. in, in a building. Nobody, even the Faena had smaller units and whatnot. So we, we really put together, you know, something very, very special here, especially for Miami, for Sunny Isles. I mean, the mayor loves us that we, we really helped put yeah. the city on the map. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so, um, and so, so you know, the, it's, it's, it's those kind of things that, uh, you know, keep us, keep us motivated to keep on going. Now, the, one last question on Miami, or two last questions actually, but one is it's very simple, simple question because I ask this to everybody who's been on the show that's in the real estate game. What age would you give Miami? Hmm. If you were to compare it to like New York or Chicago or LA, if you were to give Miami an age, what would you give it? I would say we are in our late 20s. There you go. Yes. Boom, everybody keeps saying that. Is every, that right? Every, 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 really? from, from, and I've literally asked, I, I mean, there's at least, I don't wanna, I don't wanna miss anybody. Dora Puig, Alicia Severa, uh, Myla Aguilar from Swire, Ryan Shear from PMG, Kieran Bowers from Swire, Lewis Birdman, you know, obviously yeah. 1,000 Ryan, Ryan Shear's still in his late 20s. So, he, and he's, no, he's in his 30s. Love you, Ryan. <laughs> 
Um, oh man, and I know there's others that I'm forgetting him, but uh, oh, Mayor Francis Suarez, same thing. Right. Everybody. He's saying, also in his late twenties. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's 41. He's <laughs> my know, age. I'm kidding, I'm you know, it's 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 <laughs> awesome though because everybody is saying that we're we're in that in that 20 to 30 range. Oh. Actually, Alicia Severa said it's like a woman in her 30s, still young and and sexy, and it was like, man, that was a great answer. Well, you know, let me explain my answer. Why? Please. Oh, okay. All right. So. Late twenties. What is late twenties? You know, you you, you finish college, right? Yeah. So you have a little bit of an education, but you're not yeah. exactly taking your job too seriously yet because you have no no uh, no responsibilities to the outside okay. world yet. So we're in the late twenties where the responsibilities are going to come because now we're still in that growing phase. But but we're going to have to start, you know, becoming um, contributing back and not just uh, not just uh, taking from and and so uh, and that's kind of where we're, and as we grow and as we mature, that's when when the city is going to go. But as as of right now, until we're completely built out, I don't see a maturity. Uh, happening, you know, and so uh, it's exciting. Yeah, for, very for sure. exciting, yeah. especially for you well, with all the lanes. We, we get to see, we get to say we're the parents, you know. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, last question regarding anything regarding real estate. You're not only a developer, but you also own Desert Platinum Realty, which happens to be another great real estate company out there. What advice and tips are you giving your realtors? Like when you have your meetings with your your specific group, what tips are you giving them on what they should on how to sell the under construction? There's no real pre construction right now; it's all under construction or just finished buildings like Porsche or Armani that's going to be done soon. I learned from uh, when I first started in this career in this business. I learned from um, from 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 one of Trump's sales associates. Okay, you know? and uh, her name was Susan St. James. Very very nice woman. Excellent woman. And she said to me something that stuck in my head forever. The answer is, and it's so true because now that we've been doing this long enough, we can look back. The answer is, if you think it's expensive now, just wait. Okay? Anybody who sits here and tries to play the market timing guy and tries to be better than us and better than everybody else and tries, tries to be the smartest person in the world, those are the guys who, A, never buy anything or lose out. You know, those... those um. Those vulture type people. I don't want to use yeah. any no, specific brokers' names. Yeah, that was but, enough right there. Yeah, right? <laughs> but, but like, you know, if your name is is, is something something vulture, and yeah. what kind of client are you going to get? Right? You're going to get that analytical client who's just going to analyze and analyze and analyze and never buy anything. And and that's and so you know, it's great. There's people like that in the world. But if you you know, a lot of this has to be a part of an emotional purchase. You know, which is what I try and and and, and get the realtors to to understand. This is really you're not selling a, a chip. You're not selling a widget. You're selling homes, you know, people, have, they wake up, they have, imagine them having coffee in their, in their apartment and you'll put yourself in the picture of how people will be living. You're selling actual homes where people will live and it's not about, oh, what's going to happen to the market tomorrow, what's going to happen. You have to sell them based on the merits of the project. The floor plan is excellent. It fits what you need. It has the right amount of bedrooms. You maybe, you know, everybody thinks, do I need the fourth bedroom, the third bedroom? You got to, you know, as a salesman, be a, a little bit of a salesman. It's too, for too long, the brokers have been order takers yeah. and, and just, you know, just saying, okay, would you like fries with that? You know? And, and, and so I would say, hey, you gotta like help them put them into the picture. Yeah. You, you think you need an extra fourth bedroom, but there's a hotel next door. So for the one, one, one week a year, you're going to need it. Put your extra guests or your extra in-laws or whatever into that hotel. You know? So th those are the things that we, you know, sometimes you need to help them. I had a guy come to me the other day and he says, you know, I, my, my family has a place over this place and over here and I come down here all the time and I'm finally ready to buy, but I don't know if I want to spend three months a year here. I said, but it's not like that. You know, you buy here and then you start coming down and you start making more friends and you start feeling more comfortable and you don't start from zero to three months. You go a little bit at a time and, and all of a sudden, before you know it, you're like, who the hell, I was from New Jersey. Like, who the hell wants to live in New Jersey yeah. anymore? Yeah. You know, and so, and that's kind of what I've seen happen. And it's about getting used to Miami and so, so, you know, I think brokers today are pushing too much. It's price per square foot and this one here and that one there. And if you have that analytical client, fine. And of course, that, important, that information is important. Sure. But, you know, I mean, you get what you pay for in this yeah. world. You know, and if you're buying a Honda and you're, and you're wondering why it doesn't have, uh, you know, massage seats versus the Rolls Royce that your friend is driving, you got to figure that out why, you know. It's everything is you get what you pay for. And here's the best part. A good realtor will understand that you can buy a, a Rolls Royce at a Mercedes price and know where to take you. And that's what the better realtors do. And they find out that, you know, there's projects that are selling even for double what we're selling for here in our money. They don't sell as much as we do. You know, they'll sell one for every two, 10 units sure. we sell. But at the same time, because the better brokers understand that, you know, taking the client, not just because they're paying 10% commission, don't go burn your clients for 10% commission. That's foolish and that's short-sighted. Um, you know, but I understand Wise how- Wise words. Yeah, I mean, I understand some brokers that need to eat and, and they'll be ready to sell a client under the bus, but I personally don't do that. Well, that's why, well, another reason why we don't pay those, those sure. additional commissions. We stay at five, although my salespeople are telling me, this one's paying seven, this one, I say, you know why they pay seven? Because they need to. 
You know, if you sell it based on the merits of the product of what you have here, you won't need to pay anything extra. You'll be ha you'll have a line of people at the door, and that's why today we have three hundred eight units in this building with two hundred and forty. How many? Two hundred forty something sold. Two forty three, two forty four, something like that sold. So we're over eighty percent sold. We're 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 chilling, if you will. And I'll give you an actually even a better indication, Carolina, who's behind the camera, and I were sitting waiting waiting for you to get back from your meeting. And I told Carolina, I'm like, man, we got to go somewhere behind closed doors because remember last time we were talking, there was a lot of noise. This place was hopping, man. People were coming in and out. Buyers, presentations going. Like, it, it, it got me excited about what's happened. Like, you know, we keep, Craig keeps talking, the market's back, the market's coming back. And you see it here in addition to our sales centers. I'm like, all right, man, there's, 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 there's electricity back in the it's, air. It's definitely, it's, it's back. I mean, we've always, this is a beautiful sales center. So, you know, unfortunately, a lot of our, a lot of our, uh, our the people coming in here are other developers looking to copy us, yeah. which it's okay. You know, for copy, oh, it just brings, it copy brings is my, flattering. That's it, fine. it brings Miami yeah. up. You know? it brings it's Miami. flattering to copy me with your car brands and everything. Oh, that's fine. Just do it right. That's all I ask of the other developers, yeah. you know? Um, but, uh, but, but my, my point is that, you know, it's important to put on a good show here and, and, and the kind of show that really is representative of what it is the buyer's going to see. Yeah. When he moves into the building, I love it. So uh, you know, not not the Desert Platinum is competition to uh, to ISG, but you know, one 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 of the things you said to me when uh, what I what I learned about ISG was I learned and the reason we created Desert Platinum, um, it's very interesting. I never actually went out there to become uh, uh, you know your your competitors sure. or anything like that. But what I always got jealous of, and I and I I, I take my hat off to to Edgardo de Fortuna and, and to and to ISG also was that you know these guys had these. You guys, your people, sure. your soldiers on the street, that you're able to open up a project and get it out to, to thousands of soldiers right away and, and go make sales and sell. So, and that was what we were missing. We were always kind of begging you guys to come sell yeah. us. And without giving you the list of the whole project, you had your, your other people that you had to sell yeah. for. So, so I said to Sebastian, I said, hey, let's start our own little gig here. And, and, uh, and we started with, with 10 agents. And, and now we have 107 agents already signed nice. up. Yeah, and, and it's working, it's working. I mean, we do things that um, specifically for, for, the, for our projects, if they sell in our projects, they get 100% commission. Got it. So those are the little better. Are you recruiting on my show? No, 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 no. <laughs> no I'm just saying, okay, it's all good, I'm dude. just saying you should be paying 100% commission on my projects too. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, you know, the, that, those kind of things we're, we're working on. And, and so, you know, it's, uh, it's been a help. And, and it's as we learn the market and as we, as we uh, learn how things are getting, getting done, I've been doing this now. Oh, 20 years already now. 21 years already. How old are you? I'm 43. I'm okay. going to be 44 next week. Shit, we've been doing this for a long time. Pardon my language out there. No, it's okay. <laughs> but you don't realize it until you take stock and you look and you see we, we have 10 buildings completed and, and over over $4.5 billion done. And so, you know, like, I guess we're doing something yeah. right. Well, you're, you know, you're right, though. As, as a brokerage, and, and, you know, it's a fine line, right? Because related and ISG are the owners of our company and, and we're a general real estate company. And we have to be profitable and, and do well. And at the same time, there's a reason why Related and ISG own our company, which right. is to help promote their product. So yeah. we, we've been discussing different ideas similar to what you have in terms of really helping in, the, in this first two quarters of the year to help promote, whether it's Muse or Echo Brickle or Brickle City Center or W, things similar to that. Yeah. Um, last question. Book, podcast, or TED Talk recommendation for the audience? One or none, whatever. Book. I'm not much of a great reader. Okay, that's okay. fine. I do audio books only. But, by the way. Okay, podcasts. I don't even know how to download one. I, uh, I listen to one once. <laughs> um, TED Talk. We have one of our owners at uh, at Porsche who gave a hell of a TED Talk. Okay. And you know, you always find things interesting that you know nothing about. Sure. Okay. One thing I learned about myself uh, in this, my 20 year career is I am a terrible manager of people. Terrible, 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 terrible manager of people. We have our own HR department, let them manage. I'm kind of a big picture visionary. I also get into the details on how things should be executed, but I tell somebody to do something, and, and fortunately I, I have great people who work for me that, that they don't need further instruction. Um, but when they do, I'm a terrible manager of people. And, and so we have, um, we had a, an owner at Porsche Design, his name is Bob Davis, very impressive individual. Okay. And uh, he, he gave a TED Talk, and if you look, Google him, listen to his TED Talk, it's all about management. Motivating people, okay. um, keeping them doing their job right, and and I, I learned a lot from him and from that and from that his TED talk, and and uh, it still didn't make me a better manager. I just I learned that I was a bad manager. There you go. You know, so and, and that's okay. I, I learned that I do everything wrong, and and I also learned that there are people who know how to do it right and don't try and be everything to everybody. So uh, you know, I have my managers in place, and and as long as they take my direction, everything works works fine. There you go. Yeah. Go. Thank you so much. Okay. I appreciate my pleasure. That was number two, much better than the first time. Okay, a lot more information, a little bit longer. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you love this video, like it, love it, share it. Let your customers know what's happening in South Florida. Gil, I'm going to go behind the camera. Any parting words? That's it. Bring us customers. We pay commissions. <laughs> <There you go. laughs>